say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. God will force you there if you don't pursue him with the trials. That
You were called for such a time as this. The grace that we operate on is the grace of the Holy Spirit. I do not operate under the grace of another man because man will let you down. I come under the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Don't just tap in to anything that you yourself, your spiritual eyes, are not open to see what you do, what you declare, what you decree, but you have no idea what altar they operate under, what spirits they operate under. This is not a time of collaboration and joining a cartel of fake prophets, fake apostles, fake pastors, fake evangelists, fake teachers. We don't jump on the coattail of others. The mantle that he has for this hour is very unique because nobody has where we can be. All other birds, when they're in the air, they just go with the wind. They go in this direction. And they go in big schools. But the eagle is all alone. And when the storm comes, it uses the storm to advantage, to bring itself up above the storm and look down from a prophetic point of view. We are to be separated within this hour. God is saying, you want to go higher, then you've got to go lower. Somebody say lower. The key to spiritual authority is humility. It is not jumping on the tailgate of another. It is not how much money I throw into somebody. It's not how much I do anything, but it will be individual for you. God is coming in this hour, in this genuine mood, starts to build up the mountain. Africa will know they've been deceived. They've been deceived by many wolves. The hired hirelings that have been put into those positions. They didn't wait for the men to fall. They just jumped on the coattail of others. Birds of a feather flock together. We are to be separated within this hour. God is doing something very unique in this hour because He is preparing a miracle without stain, without blemish, purified through the refiner's fire. Somebody say hallelujah. Sometimes God has to take us out. Sometimes, if we're not willing to yield and humble ourselves, then God will allow you to go through difficult circumstances so the next time you complain by what you're going through, it's probably because you haven't yielded yourself, you haven't humbled yourself and say, God, whatever you need to change, let it start with me. I don't want the process to be too long. Oh yes. This is not the hour of popularity. This is not the hour of position, jumping on someone else's tailgate. But rather, those who will say, God, I'm completely sold out for you. They will call you a troubler. When the disciples went around, they turned places upside down. 
You come against the status quo, not only in the house of God, but also in society. You just don't allow the injustices of today to be silent upon, but rather you speak up because what you stand for, you better stand, otherwise you'll fall for everything. Anointing of the Holy Ghost. The spirit of truth will come. You can't have darkness mixed with light in this hour. Because darkness and light still equals darkness. God is saying, walk in the light as I am in the light. The light will expose the hearts of people. How is your heart today? Do you still want to be recognized by people? Are you still trying to prove yourself to your family?
but it will come with a sacrifice. Are you willing to put your wife, your children, your spouse, your husband, your career, all on the line? Say, God, I desire the higher call. Do you know that there is a higher calling that even goes beyond what you're doing for the Lord right now? There is a higher calling, but the higher you go, the lower you must go. So say hallelujah. It will require sacrifice. God is looking for sacrifice. Not just a financial seed. He is looking for your heart. He wants your heart. He wants those things, those idols. Those idols within your life. Maybe it's your desire to be married. Maybe it's your desire to have children. Maybe it's your desire to even be employed. Maybe it's your desire for status. Maybe it's your desire for even those things in your life. Maybe your husband or your spouse or your wife has become a wife. Maybe your family, maybe your culture. You still want to identify with your culture. Let me tell you, when you truly become born again, we are no longer South African. We are no longer Zulu. We are no longer any tribe. We're no longer Irish descent. Whatever it is, we become citizens of heaven. We are pilgrims that are passing through this life. That means that every generational curse has no power over you because you do not allow compromise to be within your life. But because it wants to please our parents, let me tell you, you can honor your mother and father, but when what they do, when it contradicts the word of God, you've got to make a stand. You don't bring that division. God himself brings that division, precious saints. And it will cost you everything. My family rejected me. Said, let, they said, go to Africa. We're not going to support you. They thought I was crazy. I said, don't worry. I will go into as many homes as possible. Because just as I want someone to minister to my family, I'm going to make sure I go harder. I go into every home, every village, every place. And I pray that their families will be saved. Are you willing to pay the price? You said, oh, Pastor, come to pay the price. Let me tell you, there are levels of paying the price. Somebody say, Hallelujah. We're going to silence the voices. So Elijah at Bethel, he said to Elijah, You must stay here. I'm going on to Jericho. You cannot come with me. As my soul lives, as long as the Lord lives, I will be with you. I'm not going to leave your side. He wasn't jumping on the, the tailcoat. He didn't quite understand his faith, even though he was radical. But he came to Jericho, and the prophets also came to him. Actually, there was a multitude that came to him, and they said, Do you know that your master? Is going to be taken from you today. And he said, Silence! Somebody say, Silence. silence. We're going to silence all the false prophets. We're going to silence. We're going to ask God for discernment. Unless you have discernment in this hour, you will fall for everything. But you've got to take a stand. You say, God, I want to be revived in your word. I want to be revived in your spirit so that this thing will not go off track. He already said yes yesterday as prophet Amos came with the plumb line and said, hey, guess what? You've got a crooked, crooked wall. It's about to collapse. Our spiritual lives have become crooked because we have come out of the word of God. We do not spend as much time in the word of God. We just want to do a quick thing and say, I tap in, I tap in, I tap in, I tap in. And you don't even know what you're tapping into. Have 
I will teach you to be a warfare warrior. I will teach you to be a warfare warrior by my book, by my CDs, by my course. The Lord is coming to rebuke all the money handling that is going on. Everything you'll see on our ministry, it is all for free. Because the Lord will say to me, you didn't charge one person. Who is given more will be charged more harshly. We don't need another revelation. We don't need another interpretation or a definition of the gospel. We just need the gospel preached. When the blood is applied and the cross is lifted up, it will draw all men unto themselves. It will draw men to God. It will draw men through the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Are you born again? Have rivers of living water flow through you. He said, Those who believe, rivers shall flow from their belly. Are rivers flowing from you today? What is that blockage? What's blocking you? Are you going by faith? Have you made the sacrifice? If you said, God, I don't care if every attack from hell comes. You said, when the enemy comes in like a flood, you're going to raise the standard. You're going to raise the standard. They will come in one direction, but they will flee in seven directions. We are more than conquerors. As I said last night, repentance is that spiritual key to your spiritual oppression spiritual prison to your spiritual cage and we've all been given that key and it's through repentance and as you repent you come out of that cage and you start walking forward and forward and forward and the pressure starts to leave you Jesus has done it all on the cross we need to exercise that somebody say hallelujah so Elijah says, I'm going to go to the Jordan. Somebody say Jordan. Jordan, the same place that Jesus humbled himself and was baptized. And the Holy Spirit came down from heaven. And the Father said, in whom I am well pleased. So they came to the Jordan. He wouldn't leave him. So he grabbed his metal, swelled it up, rolled it up, and then struck the waters. And all those 50 plus prophets were looking from a distance and they saw that the waters parted and the ground became dry for the cross. As soon as they crossed, they came to the other side and he says, what can I do for you? You can't come where I'm going. He says, I want a double portion from God. Somebody say double portion. He says, you're asking for the impossible. Man cannot give that to you. Man's grace cannot give that to you. Nobody else can give that to you. Only the Holy Spirit who gives without partiality, who gives as he chooses, as he desires for his purpose. And he said, it's an impossible thing that you ask. It's impossible. It's impossible. See, Jordan is a place of vision. God must open your spiritual eyes. His spiritual eyes had been open that day because he said, if you see me being taken up, if you see me being taken up, if God deems it, if God allows it, if God chooses it, then the mantle will fall. But it's no longer just Elijah's. It comes directly from the hand of God. 
So the whirlwind came. We know that God works in whirlwinds. The whirlwind came and took Elijah. He saw the fiery chariots of Israel down with the flaming horses. Placed him on the chariot. Elisha cries out to come into the hands of God is a terrifying thing. It's a holy thing. It's a pure thing. Don't let anybody deceive you anymore with any false visitations. When God is going to come in this end time revival, it is coming seven times more powerful because the latter is seven times greater than the former. that is coming. And guess where it's starting? It's starting in Africa. God is coming to Africa. Don't go to America, otherwise you get what you desire. This revival, you are going to come in the same and, and, and leave the same. Yeah, ba, 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 ba. So his spiritual eyes were open. He tore his garment. And he said, surely God, I have seen. You've opened my spiritual eyes. I can now see. Are your spiritual eyes open to stay today? Because unless you're reading God, you will be deceived. He said, they will come in my name. They will even come. They will do false miracles, false signs and wonders, and if it were possible, even the elect will be deceived. The remnant shall be his elect. The remnant that he is coming back for. See, he grabs that mantle that God had touched and came down upon him. The mantle wasn't the same mantle. The same God that by day they followed the cloud and by night they followed the fire. God that was operating here. The same Elijah that pulled down the fire. And then later on, the general and his company of army men, he said, if I be a man of God, the fire of God shall fall from heaven. And they were struck down dead. The same God. James 5 verse 16 says, The fervent prayers of a righteous man, they shall avail it much. Elijah was a mere man, just like you and me. Just like you and me. He had the same priorities, but he subjected himself to the Holy Spirit. He fasted, he prayed, he was set apart for a work. He says, when he closed the heavens and commanded, they were closed for three years and six months. When he commanded them to be open, they were open. So Elisha, he grabbed the mantle and rolled it up and then struck the waters. Those prophets that were watching from a distance said, Surely the God of Elijah is with Elisha. But they came over to him. They said, Should we send 50 men out just in case God has mistakenly translated him from this place to that place? Because we know it is common with Elijah, he can be translated because he was close with God and just like. God and 
heaven was not maybe the same thing. Maybe he didn't go all the way to heaven. Maybe he was on that mountain, on this mountain. He says, you will not find him. There's no need to go. Why are you looking? Why are you looking? Just like Jesus said, why are you looking for the dead amongst the living? Why are you looking? Why are you looking? Why are you looking? But as they persisted, he allowed them. So he sent them off for three days. And he waited in that place. Until they returned. And what did he say? Did I not tell you so? Have I not been telling you? Doesn't that fit with the dream that I shared last night? Of the pastor's wife that had a dream that there was a big massive revival meeting taking place. And the rapture happened. And many servants of God were left behind, even in that meeting place. And they were terrified. They were weeping and gnashing their teeth. And then I was at a distance, preparing a glorified body that they could not touch. Just as they could not touch Jesus at that time. When you're transformed into your glorious, you're going somewhere. And I was saying to them, did I not tell you? Did I not tell you? Did I not tell you the rapture was coming? Did I not tell you it was coming? But you did not prepare yourself. You did not ready your heart. You did not go by faith. You did not make the, the sacrifice. You did not pursue and go through warfare. You did not ask God to open your spiritual eyes. Precious saints. Jesus is coming back soon. And this can be our last call. This is not a time for playing games in the house of God. Be careful where your spiritual roots lead to. Be careful who you claim to be your spiritual mentors. Because you watch out what you're touching. Watch out what you're tapping into. Because that very thing that you're tapping into could be leaving you here on this earth. He is holy. Somebody say holy. He is holy. They must die to themselves. Where it's not about pleasing people. It's not about promotion. In this hour, no coming back soon. No church likes rebuke. No church likes me to tell their congregation, you're lukewarm and the Lord will spit you out. They don't want the Lord to return. They want the benefits of what Jesus Christ did on the cross, but they're not willing what needs to change in life? So when you preach something that's in such messages, it comes against Christian television. It comes against Christian radio. It comes against churches with any ounce of compromise. It comes against man's agenda. But every 
The difference is, people, we are living in the end. And God is coming and saying, just as Paul told the Romans, awaken from your slumber, for your salvation has come closer and sooner than you ever believed before. He is coming back soon. He is coming back soon. And you will not be able to say, nobody told you. Even if your pastor didn't tell you, somebody was sent to tell you the truth. Maybe it was that street evangelist. Maybe it was that annoying person that was preaching on the trains. Maybe it was that annoying person preaching at the tent. Maybe it was your work colleague. Maybe it was someone that handed you a gospel. Every person that goes to hell will be reminded of the times that somebody came to them with the gospel, but they rejected it. God does not delight in the death of the wicked. He repentance revival is it's not about playing games. It is to usher in the soon coming, snatching away of the bride that will take place. It will be a terrifying day for those left behind. It will be a blessed day for those that are there enough. Come on, Jesus. Take my children from The 
Lord's not coming back for buildings made of stone and gold and wood and concrete. But rather, God. He was the master cornerstone that was rejected, beaten, that was whipped and abused for our iniquity. Seven times great was the former reign of the day of Pentecost, all the reigns in between, the different moods of the Holy Spirit, but rather seven times greater and such a great harvest is coming in, but it's coming in through a peace gives a deep preparation, a deep cleansing to prepare us for that day of rapture. And he is coming. What has been prayed and birthed in intercession. Revival is birthed in prayer in intercession. And it is sustained in prayer in intercession. And it will carry out when the Lord comes to snatch us away. Oh, Holy Spirit. We don't want any counterfeit revivals. We know in the Spirit. And when it's released, the one could pick up the camera and say, the God is in this place, that God's here, and we in 
this revival in a degree that will bring healing, that will bring deliverance, that will bring freedom. And no one will have to lay any hands on you, but God is coming in a sovereign move to touch His people that desire Him. That are not just going to touch everything, but say, God, I want to touch you. God, I want your mantle to fall. God, I want to serve you. God, I want to get right. God, I want everything that you have to offer me. Do you want to partake of that living water today? Isaiah 55 verse 1 All you who thirst All you who hunger Come, come and buy Come and buy and eat and drink Though you have no money Come, come, come The Lord is beckoning you to come And buy and eat from Him You don't have to buy the anointing You don't have to buy it Like the foolish virgins It is free it is available for you here today. You don't have to sow the seed to get this. But God did it. Jesus did it all on the cross. And he is saying, I'm going to come and visit the church in power, in a new move. It's time for the new white skins to receive the new wine and the new oil. Oh, Lord. He is holy. Somebody say it's time. It's time for a visitation. Locate me. Locate me today. I'm willing to go by faith. I'm willing to make the sacrifice. I'm willing to endure the warfare. I'm willing to allow you to open my spiritual eyes and wait for the man to fall. I'm not going to be deceived. I'm going to shut out every other voice other than the voice of the Holy Spirit. And you're going to lead me and guide me because I am your son. I am your son. And we are led by the Holy Spirit. This day. Until you come. To take us home. In the name of Jesus. I want you to stand on your feet right now. Start to cry out to the Lord. And say Lord. I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. Locate me. The only grace we want today is the spirit of grace. Man's grace will not endure to the end. You can walk with those that are favored, but as soon as you leave that company, that favor will leave. But when the Lord blesses us, see the blessings of the Lord is what makes a man rich, and it comes without sorrows, it comes without challenges, it comes without headache, it comes without pain. Allow God you. He wants to bless you. Say, God, I'm not going to leave this place until you bless me. I'm not going to leave this place until the mountain, the man falls. I'm not going to leave this place until I drink of your Holy Spirit. I'm not going to drink and leave this place until the rivers of the living water flow from my belly today because I believe in you. I believe in you. I believe in you. And you said, if I believe in you, rivers of living water, they will flow. Let them the flow. Just put your hand on your stomach right now. And you're living water. I believe in you, Jesus. I believe in you, Jesus. You are.
in the name of Jesus. Whatever God is doing in this hour, don't do without us, Lord. Don't pass this by. Whatever He is doing in this hour, don't do it. Whatever you're doing in this season, whatever you're doing in this season, whatever you're doing in this season, whatever you're doing in this season,
flow of the Spirit. If you want to tap into this, go to me, close your eyes, and say, God, I want to connect. I want to tap into heaven. I want to have a direct call with heaven. Spirit. Keep 
contained. Yes, full of contained. Holy.
tap in, tap in, tap in, tap in. Tap in today. Don't miss out. Don't miss out. Don't miss out. Tap in today. Tap in, tap in, tap in. Whatever God's doing in this house, may He not do it without you.
every blockage, every blockage, every blockage that is blocking you from receiving the fullness of the flow and the river of living water. Be removed, be removed.
Oh! 